think it's important that everyone kind of sit back and look at kind of where our kids are, where they kind of met us, and then go back and see, you know, you know where they're going. Uh, it's a pretty, cool, pretty big deal for them and their future moving forward. So I think it's a good thing. It's awesome. But I do want to, um, there's also some kids that we need to help out still. Like there's, they still need a home. And, and now once everything kind of settles with signing day, we need to figure out kind of what, um, you know, where we can find a spot for them. And we've done a lot of work with a lot of these kids, so it's kind of cool. Um, we'll just go through the top, and if there's anybody, you know, Josh, you can take over for some of them, um, kind of where they came from and whatnot. But um, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Check, PBI, uh, quarterback, Tony Gale, uh, that's been locked up for a while. Uh, Andrew Park, shit, it's been three years, four years working with him. Um, off and on with Lake Radic, and two years straight now. Uh, he's going to Maryland as a tight end. Um, the um, Goron PVI, you know, got, got an option to go to Wake Forest. Good kid, had some other offers, but I think he wants to go ACC. I think that's good for him too. It's a small ACC school. He came out of PVI, not a lot of big, um, you know, big, uh, no, not, a, not a big school, but a good opportunity for him there. Alex Fennell um, was on our Epic 17, did a lot of work with uh, um, Coach Croft, and uh, he's going to going to Old Miss, that's a really good spot for him. Good family, played in the uh, uh, the Hawaiian High School Bowl, which is kind of cool. A uh, heck of a kid, and I'll have a lot of options there. Uh, Caleb Brooks, this is this is funny to see all these guys kind of flip and, and end up at Richmond, uh, but I think it's a good thing. It's a good thing for us. We've had a lot of success at Richmond, a lot of CAA guys, but um, I, think, uh, I think together that's going to be a really good class. So uh, Caleb Brooks is going to Richmond from Centerville. Uh, ben Maffey from Briarwoods had a lot of offers, Mar Marshall, uh, Navy, Fordham, some other big schools, and then ends up going to Richmond. Uh, Samari Springs uh, going to Richmond as well, had a lot of other offers. A lot of people come out of the woodwork late. He's a kid that's actually going to be bigger. He's a twin. Uh, his brother uh, is going to Georgetown as a quarterback, real good kid as well. Obviously, Sean, you know, a lot of athleticism, a lot of genetics, good talent there. But both the kids are super smart, good kids. Good football players. Uh, I think Samari's going to be so much bigger in two years. I just don't think he's there yet. I think that's why it had a lot of little offers. <laughs> but he's a big-time football player. Super smart, too. Uh, Sam Kidd from Madison Safety. He's been with us for a while. Uh, had a lot of people come out of the woodwork late um, and uh, got an opportunity to go to JMU. Uh, I think he's going to be a kid that's going to help them there. Hell of a kid. Um, All-State Player of the Year. Um, you know, Good football player. Not a huge, good football high school, and that kind of hurts him and makes them do a lot of work on their own, makes their parents do a lot of work, uh, not a lot of high school support. But uh, I'll tell you what, they, they put the work in, and, and he got a spot at his dream school, so that's awesome for him. Vashon McCann's going to Towson. Um, Keyshawn Wilson from North Point going to ODU. Uh, good athlete, good football player, mean, likes to come down and hit. He'll be a kid that... Um, has a shot at the next level if he opens up his hips and he doesn't put his hand in the dirt in college. He'll be a linebacker or Mike at the next level. Mitchell Johns, Gonzaga, committed to Navy. Good football player. Uh, got a good instinct, good nose for the ball. Football family, you know, from dad all the way down to his brothers. And uh, had a lot of success in high school. Uh, Julian Garrett, Army, uh, came out of Centerville, running back. Good, good football player. Dad, uh, dad played, I think, where? Uh, Ohio State. Ohio State or Michigan or Ohio State? One of the two. Played at a big school. Uh, of course, if I get it wrong, I'll be pissed because they're rivals. Yeah. Uh, Zach Stanley from Woodgrove is going to Elon. Good kid, smart kid, good nose for the ball. You know, he's your big meathead, middle linebacker type kid. But, um, you know, that's a good fit there. Jack Levins, Clarion from Hayfield. That's a good fit for him. I know he wanted to go bigger, but um, you know it's a better option for him. I, I don't think he's got the height or the size to kind of go long term. Um, you know, Dido, you know, good kid. Needs to put some weight on. He's going to go to Kentucky. Um, you know, we'll see if that that kind of lasts and plays out. But I think it's it's a good fit from a school standpoint, regardless, which is what matters. You know, if you're not playing ball, that's a, that's a good thing there. Um, who's the next <coughs> one you got, Josh? Tim Forster. From Oakton, where's he on? Brown. Yeah, Brown. smart kid, obviously. Uh, Raymond from Westfield, obviously. They go back-to-back -back state champs. You know, he gets an opportunity, wants to play quarterback, probably could have went to other schools at multiple positions. 
you know, great other things are big deals, but uh, ends up going to Sioux Falls. Um, Grant Neagley, another kid who, you know, came in here during the summers, Episcopal, so it's a boarding school. Um, kids at that parents in, in Texas now uh, with the Exxon movement. And uh, he'll get an opportunity to go to Yale. I think that's good. We have two, three guys going to Yale this year. Um, you know, from the quarterback down, I think that's awesome. We get a running back, a quarterback, and a lineman. And I think, um, you know, with with Jimmy, he could do some good things. So I think that'll be a good option. What else we got? Thomas. Uh, he's a kid I've had since he was in sixth, seventh grade. Uh, both parents are Naval Academy grads. I think he'll get a shot at Army. He's going to play rugby there. Um, We'll see what his football career looks like. He probably, he definitely could play there. It just depends on what he wants. Carter Ed Edwards on the baseball side, Randolph Macon. Uh, it's a good fit for him. Uh, Justin Harrison is a kid that we helped out when we were with uh, Osborne Park. You know, Dan Evans, you know, took over. That's a kid. That's a perfect example. You know, if Dan doesn't get that head coaching job probably two years ago, that kid maybe goes Division three at best. I don't even think he finishes. He gets an opportunity. It's a good football player, good kid, but without you know, a good head coach on board and kind of changing, changing the culture of that program, I think he's a kid that either transfers or gets lost, you know, completely. So that's good. Alex Miller, um, you know, Robinson, all-conference player, is a quarterback two years, he's going to go to JMU. Um, that's a kid, mark my words, he will be a college coach one day and a good one. His dad's a coach at Georgetown. He's got a, I mean, he's got a better knack for the ball than – uh, than most of these big time talent kids, and he's just got a good, good, uh, good, uh, good eye for coaching. Uh, Skyler, like we were talking about, going to Georgetown. Um, good, good kid, good family. Ivory uh, Westfield going to Rhode Island. Um, Joey Free going to Sioux Falls with um, with this quarterback. Zach Jewell from Westfield going to uh, Georgetown. You know that's an interesting one. Got a call from uh, Tom Healy. Say hey, can you help this kid out? You know, pick up a phone, called three places. The very next day, he was on the radar and had you know a couple camp looks, and then ended up pulling an offer at Georgetown, which is awesome. Uh, and it's kind of cool to kind of go back and see kind of where those kids ended up. Uh, Joe Zuccari, another kid I trained since he was in seventh grade, Gonzaga kid, good ball player. You know, he's he, he, either they switch him over to safety or he stays there at white corner. Uh, you know, he's going to go over to Butler. Had a couple other opportunities. Probably could have walked on at a bigger school. You know, could have went to a West Virginia, walked on. Don't know if it would have been the best fit. I think he's got a really good fit there. Um, Kobe, Seton Hall, he was going to probably get some other offers later in the game because of where he is academically. He was an All-State player. Um, his brother's at South Carolina. You know, I've trained them, their family for, you know, it's going on five years now, which is kind of cool. But... You know, we'll see where he ends up plays up. He's also very talented musically, so that's a really good program for him, you know, in their arts program, which is good. Uh, who else you got? No, I think I missed a few. Go back up. Sean Wilkinson, Madison, right? Mm -hmm. um, he's going where? Josh Moon. Christopher. He's going to CNU. They just got a new coach, second coach in the program's history. I think, uh, you know, they'll do some new thing. They'll do some good things as well. Uh, historically, CNU has been a program where freshmen do not play. You gotta, you gotta basically sit the bench, ride the pine. They treated it like it's a major league baseball program, where you know you, the older people end up getting getting their rights. And um, hopefully, they kind of change that and let some talent kind of you know go in there. Who did I miss, Josh? Patrick, all American camp guys. Who's that? Go ahead and go over those. Jordan Hallford from Battlefield, Tate Hoops from App State, um, John, John Markell, he's going to Seton Hill. Um, Seton Hill, that's where um, uh, Norwood went too, right, Jake? Stone Hill. Stone Hill went to Stone Hill, so that's the one, yeah. Got it. Another Navy guy, Jeremiah Boyd from Heritage. Yeah. And Caleb Gray's probably going to end up at McDaniel. Super smart kid, good test scores, good GPA. Um, it's a good fit for him at the Division three level. You know, he's a kid that that um, you know all he wanted to do was be able to play college ball, and he made that dream happen. You know, two three years ago when we met him, Josh, you know, there it was a different kid. Not just physically, but uh, that was a kid Mark yesterday that came in. He's like, oh, I'm big. I gotta wear these shirts. I'm like, your definitions of big are a little different, but. Um, not socially too, you know, you, 
I think he's come a long way. He's a good, good kid, good football player. You know, led his team this year, and I think he's getting himself an opportunity, which is awesome. What else you got? DJ. DJ's a kid. It's awesome too, because Dion, his dad, I've known him for years, um, and he's going to Morgan State as a quarterback. I saw him at, you know, Jay Gilbert, correct? But this was at um, Smyrna High School. Was when I think I first met him, his seventh or eighth grade year. I mean, we put the hurt on him. I mean, I had that was the year I had uh, DeMornay, Caleb, um, AJ. You know, the, the, and those guys were sophomores or juniors that year, and we put a hurt on the seventh grade team. And DJ was the quarterback of the team that we put a hurt on him. And now you get to see this kid kind of grow up, and now he's in college, which is kind of cool. So he's got a good shot and uh, good family, do a lot of work. Philip, undecided. You know, I'll let you kind of go through these. I'll see kind of where they end up. But um, they got some offers and options right now. Phil's a service academy guy in my mind. I know he's got some Division III, one AA options. He wants to go service academy. So if he gets in, even if it isn't for sports, he'll be a kid that walks on. Um, but he'll have some other op options as well. It's just going to figure out what happens later in the game, especially with signing day and kind of where everyone falls. Uh, Tanner Murray, good football player. Um, doesn't have the speed to play corner, but he's there. He's a 4 6 guy, which is fast, but not at the college 1A level. He's a, he's a mid major guy, in my opinion. I, I don't think, I think he, he got into coastal, might be a walk on option there. Um, and I know some of the other schools are looking at him. I do think he's a mid major guy. He's more like a Marist, uh, an IUP, maybe a D2 option for him as well. We'll see. Billy Walker. He's a stud football player. He's got a good nose for the ball. His issue is just academically where he is grades-wise. Good kid. It just needs the work. Shane just got off the phone with his dad. Uh, he's got a couple offers right now. Um, we'll find out where he ends up going. Uh, but he's got, you know, Liberty. I think it's a good fit for him. Academically, socially, football, they're probably a little bit bigger. Campbell, probably the right fit both, right, on academics, socially, and football-wise. And then he also got Stetson as well. So... Um, just depends on how far he wants to go. If he wants to stay in the Carolinas, I think it's going to be Campbell or um, or uh, Liberty. I think if he goes down to you know a Florida school, I think he's going to be a little. It's, it's not going to be way too fast for him, but academically, it's a good fit too. So, um, is it Jabril or Jahil? Jahil. Jahil. Um, good football player. He. You know, he's a linebacker, wants to play linebacker. He's probably a hand-in-the-dirt guy, and I think that would hurt him. Went to a small private school, uh, and, you know, he'll get an option. I think he'll definitely have an opportunity to go somewhere. Uh, he's a good football player, good kid. Uh, his cousin, Seneca, uh, is at Liberty right now as an All-State player. I think he'll have some, you know, he's got some good good ties. I think he'll have a good option there. Markel is a kid I've trained since he was, got in sixth grade. Um, you know, another all-state player, all-conference all kid, run back, good athlete, played quarterback in high school. That hurts him academically. He um, probably a D2 kid. Um, and Marshall's a hard academic school too, so it, it makes it tough. You know, I mean, he's, he's a multi-sport player. He's running track right now, so it's going to see kind of where that falls out. Silas, um, same type of a kid of his brother, just not as big. His brother's at the Naval Academy. He's going to be a going to be a serious ball player in the next year or two. So we'll see kind of where he ends up falling out. Uh, Brad Porter, big kid, got the body, not a lot of years under his belt, and I think that's the hard part there. See what that shakes out. What else you got, Josh? Grant Miller from Robinson. Um, not sure where he's going to end up. He's a D3 kid, but he's got a shot. You know, I think that's key. And then most of these next ones are All-American camp guys. Um, we have a lot from St. Charles. Yeah, and I think Avery, uh, who's their head coach there at St. Charles, does a great job. He'll find a spot for them. It's just a matter of even if maybe they're JUCO kids or they're kids that end up, um, you know, finding a, a, another school and then transferring. But um, they do a really good job. They're a good football program. They have a good lifting program. You know, academics are, you know, gen generally pretty good um, there because the coach stays on them. But it's all about the right fit. The, the program's not where it needs to be. They're not a, a, a two, three game playoff team. And because of that, I don't think they, they're not recognized yet. So what else you got? Uh, Daniel Chung, Westfield, he was uh, Defensive Player of the Year. Has he got Six any offers right now? I'm not sure. I know he's had interest, but I don't know offers. 
Yeah, I think kid, I think that his his issue is a profile. You know, he's a good kid in the conference. He's a, this is one of those kids that's going to be a stellar all play a defensive player of the year at the high school level, and then as he goes to college, that might not scale because they're looking for bigger, faster athletes that they teach how to play ball. He's a good football player. He's got a good nose for the balls. Coached by good, you know, in a good program. You know, he'll work his ass off, but. You know where does that where does that fall in the recruiting, and they're not going to pay money for that. I think he'll find a fit, and it's just a matter of kind of does he want to go academic? Does he want to go, you know, does he want to go and like play it, be a dreamer, go to a big school, and then maybe you know walk on. Um, and the rest of the guys are uh, all American camp guys, still undecided. Yeah, I think that um, the, the majority of those guys are going to get a couple options. You know, you look at a kid like Greg, who just picked up football first time, you know, and, you know, was having to sell year, earns the starting job as a kicker, you know, their team wins the state championship, you know, he'll get a shot, and Coach Brooks will, you know, work on him, he's just got to stay healthy. Uh, Ty's a kid, you know, ACL injury, he's another service academy kid that, you know, if he, if he gets into the Coast Guard or goes service academy, He'll be a kid that could probably play, contribute, be on a good program, and do really well. Good football player, good kid, probably um, probably better athlete than he is a football player. You know, better weight room guy than he is a football player. And uh, you know, those guys, there's always a spot for them. But you know, right now we're at 70, 71 kids. Not to mention a handful that have you know they still have to shake out you know after signing day. Go ahead, scroll that back up. Um, I feel pretty good about where we are, you know, this year. And it always happens this way too, like after signing day, there's a couple other kids that go mid-major and shake out. Um, there's a couple like kids that get into a big school, they might get into a UVA, a UNC, a, uh, a Maryland, uh, and they get a walk-on opportunity, and then they take it, you know, but it's based upon do they get into tech, you know. If they can get into tech, then they get a shot. If they can't get into tech, you know, then they might have to go to one of the smaller schools. They might have to go to a WJ. They might have to go to a you know a Randolph Macon that is offering them. They have the grades to get in, but just because of the state stuff, they end up not getting into the county. It's tough for some of them. I mean, we're in you know they only each state school only takes so many kids per county, um, and academically, we're probably one of the best counties in the country. I mean, Fairfax and Loudoun County, some of the best academic pub, uh, public high schools in the country. So that's even tougher. But um, we'll pull up the list from my kids that are either in Florida or in other areas as well that we've, you know, that worked with. You know, we'll see how that shakes out, but I know a lot of those guys have already kind of found a home. But, you know, obviously it seems like we really did a good job with the uh, CAA, uh, the Ivies, Patriot League, and, you know, uh, ACC, which is good for, you know, small group. I don't think it's the biggest year in uh, Northern Virginia, D.C., in my opinion, but, um, it does set the groundwork for a good, you know, good next couple of years to see what those kids do in college. Not a lot of NFL players on there. Uh, I think there's a handful of options. We'll see what they develop. But there's a lot of really good kids that are going to get a great experience to play college football. So I like that. So, anyone else you think? But the majority of our guys, I think, found a home. There's nobody um, that didn't find a home, which is key. You know, we had some guys that came to the football camp that didn't kind of work with us. Those guys haven't found a home yet. But everybody as far as that were a football player, that were on their program, I mean, I think it was like 17 out of the 18 kids or 19 kids uh, were seniors last year on that program with, with our team. And they're all on that list and going to a college. And, you know, 70 kids having a spot, 50 of them pretty much getting scholarships. That's a big deal. So between that and you know, uh, spring signing day with the other sports, and then earlier, right, with the female sports and basketball, you know, we'll be all over 100 kids. So I'm pretty happy about that. So, um, you know, I, it, every every landscape's different, right? You know, you look at Delaware, right? Different landscape. You know, you look at kind of where Texas is, completely different landscape. You know, you know that you have to break up in almost quadrants. You know, Delaware. You know, you might have to just go north or south, and that's yeah, it. Yeah, pretty much. You know, and then it's even then it's still small pickings. Very small. You know, um, Florida. It's it's Dave Broward, and then everything else. You know, that's it. You know, maybe you get a Palm Beach where it's just Palm Beach. You know, but um, that pretty much hits. You know, D 
D.C., Maryland, and Virginia, um, mainly Virginia just because of where we are. But I, mean, I think that's pretty good for <laughs> you know, a bunch of kids wanting to go play ball. You know, when they were seventh and eighth grade, they end up kind of living out those dreams. So, anything else, Josh? Clemente. Clemente, I think, is going to end up going to Elon. Uh, in my opinion, I think that's a really good fit for him. You know, I don't think he'll be playing quarterback or corner, but he's a good athlete, got a good nose for ball, might be a slot receiver, or play in the safety if you put some weight on. But uh, he played corner in high school, which shows his speed and his ability. He likes being on an island because he's not really disciplined, <laughs> and it plays into his personality. So he's like, you lock that guy down, and he does it, you know, which is good. He's got a good nose for the ball, goes up and gets it, so that might be a chance for him to play safety you put some size on. But yeah, I think he'll... He'll have a shot. He definitely gets, he already has some offers now just to see kind of where it shakes out. Later today, he'll probably end up either making a commitment or, you know, um, based upon where he ends up getting into school. You know, but his brother, he's a pro pro hockey player now, played at Brown. His other brother uh, played a year in college at, uh, uh, at um, where did, where's Judd coaching at? I can't believe, I'm forgetting that. It's, uh, Good school though, good program, good training program. You know where Judd Logan is, Mark? I'm losing my mind now, I gotta check. Ashland, that's where it is. Ashland, that's where his brother plays. So that, that will help him. You got some good options. But overall, I think everyone, when you, when you say 100% of your seniors are going to play college football, I, I think that, that means a lot. You know, And then the rest of them, or it's just a matter of do they want to go big school, you know, and get that kind of social environment, but maybe not see the field, uh, and or do they want to go to a school that may be the better fit for them on the football side, but maybe lacks something of what they think prestige or socially or classroom setting or academically that they're trying to get. It's just about finding the right fit. I think that I feel pretty good about that. So that's a good list. Cool. I think it's important for you guys to know kind of where these kids are going and what they do. Like if you back up on a kid like. You know Caleb Brooks, and you say, "Hey, five years ago, you know, we worked with this kid that was skinny and couldn't put ties on damn shoes, or a kid like Jimmy Check that put on, I mean, how many thirty something pounds, right? I mean, thirty pounds. He goes to he goes to a camp last year, you know, even twenty pounds lighter than what he what he is now. He doesn't get a shot. So that, I mean, that's some of the reasons. This is a kid didn't have a high school support and he ends up getting a shot. So that's great. Um, you know, Goron, same thing." Doesn't have the high school film. Went to a small private school. They had 30 kids on their team. They didn't win much games. But, you know, you just follow the system. You do it yourself. You have good grades. It will all work out. So, you know, Sam Kidd, that's a good example of a good athlete, a kid that works his ass off, does everything right, and, you know, God's priority, it falls into place. And you got to give credit to where credit's due. He, He's earned everything he's got. You know, he's not a kid that's like, all right, here, here's your kid. He's, you know, he, he's given something. You know, he's pretty much has earned every ounce of recognition, and almost half the time doesn't even want it. So that, that means a lot to me. But and I think next year's class is going to be a really good one too.